Hello friends! In this video we are going to remember how the legendary movie Gone with the Wind was filmed and we are going to see some amazing footage from the shooting of this epic movie. But while we are talking about it, we cannot forget that the shooting itself was far from easy. The producer, actors, and crew members had to go through a lot to get the movie made. You are at the Frozen History Channel and let's start. The idea to make a movie about Gone with the Wind was born after the success of the novel of the same name by Margaret Mitchell in 1936. Moreover, Mitchell wrote the novel in a very strange way. She already had a finished ending, the last chapter, and the rest she made up as she went along, concentrating on the ending. The book sold 50,000 copies on its first day, and later won the Pulitzer Prize. Margaret Mitchell's royalty for the book she wrote was $500 plus royalties on sales. In the end, the author earned about $3 million. And if we take inflation, today this amount would be $33 million. By the way, originally Mitchell's novel was to be called Tomorrow Will Be Another Day. At least under this name it was going to be printed. But Mitchell did not like this name and eventually she came up with several alternatives. Among them was the title Gone with the Wind, which she had peeked at in Ernest Dawson's novel Sayonara. About a month after the book's publication, producer David Selznick, who had previously produced the 1933 film King Kong, negotiated with Margaret Mitchell to buy the film rights to her book. The deal cost Selznick $50,000. Selznick hired the famous screenwriter Howard to write the screenplay. He agreed on the condition that he would work alone and that no one would interfere with him. In the end, he handed over a script for a five-hour film, which made Selznick terribly angry. But Howard refused to cut his masterpiece, so Selznick began to look for people to improve the script. At first, the actress Beth Davis wanted to play the role of Scarlet, but she could not get it because she had a long-term contract with the studio Warner Brothers. However, Jack Warner agreed to let Beth go on the condition that Rhett Butler would play Earl Flynn. But then Bat Davis herself backed out, because she did not want to see Earl Flynn as her partner, because she thought he was too feminine. In the end, the studios and Beth were never able to come to an agreement. The search for an actress to play the leading role was not easy. There were almost 1,500 applicants for the role of Scarlet. Of these, 400 passed the first stage and went on to the second audition. But in the end, the unknown Vivian Lee was chosen for the role of Scarlet. Even the author Margaret Mitchell approved of Vivian's candidacy. And it was very strange, because initially the role of Scarlet was to be played exclusively by an American actress, while Vivian Lee was British. In order to hide Vivian's British accent, she had to hire a dialect coach. But there was another problem. Vivian Lee has naturally blue eyes, whereas in the story Scarlet should have green eyes. But this problem was solved with filters and special makeup. Yes, she did not become completely green-eyed, but her eyes had at least a little green color. For the role of Rhett Butler, such famous actors as Gary Cooper, Ronald Coleman, and some other stars of the 30s were considered. But in the end, the role went to Clark Gable, who just perfectly embodied the screen image of Butler. It was not easy to get Clark because he had a contract with MGM, the head of which was his father-in-law, Louis Mayer, who did not want to give Gable to a competitor, even if he was the husband of his daughter. But after a while, Louis Mayer took pity on his relative and gave him Clark Gable, and even gave him money for the movie, $1.25 million, to save him from humiliation. Of course, Louis Meyer didn't do this for nothing. For his goodwill gesture, he received the distribution rights to the movie, as well as 50% of the profits for the first seven years of the show. When Gary Cooper turned down the role, he stated that the movie would be a flop, and he was very happy that Clark Gable would fail. But as you all know, Gone with the Wind was a worldwide hit. During the filming of the movie, Three directors were involved. The original meaning and quotations have been preserved. The first was George Cukor, who shot a significant portion of the scenes. However, he was dismissed from the project by David Selznick. Selznick believed that Cukor was unable to shoot romantic scenes between a man and a woman due to his non-traditional orientation. Another version suggests that Cukor was fired because he wanted to shoot the movie according to the original script. The next director, Victor Fleming, was the main director. 
He became famous for directing the movie The Wizard of Oz for MGM Studio, thanks in part to his father-in-law, Louis Mayer. However, Vivian Lee was not a fan of Fleming's approach to filming and would often bring the original book to the set to show him where he was wrong in certain moments. Towards the end of filming, Fleming confessed to severe exhaustion and his inability to continue working, prompting Sam Wood to take over the remaining shooting. However, after a brief rest, Fleming returned to work, resulting in two directors on set. The script underwent constant changes, which made it challenging for the actors to prepare for shooting. Sometimes, a new version of the script was presented daily. Actor Leslie Howard, who played Ashley, literally hated his role. He felt very uncomfortable in the role because the actor himself was 45 years old, while his character was only 21 at the beginning of the movie. In addition, he was terribly annoyed by the costumes he wore on the set. He even mentioned that he felt like he was playing the role of a doorman in a magical hotel. He later wrote a letter to his daughter saying how much he hated his character, Ashley, and how much it pissed him off that they were trying to make him into a young man by constantly dressing him up and putting makeup on him. The role of Mammy was claimed by President Roosevelt's personal cook, Lizzie McDuffie, but eventually Hattie McDaniel was cast for the role. Hattie McDaniel won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for this role. She was also the first black actress to win an Academy Award. But since blacks were second-class citizens in the United States at that time, Hattie had to sit at a separate table. And one more thing about dark-skinned people. No black actor was allowed to attend the premiere of Gone with the Wind, including Hattie McDaniel, who played a very important role in the film. Clark Gable himself stood up in defense of Hattie McDaniel. He and Hattie communicated very well and were even friends, so he said that if the actress of the role of Mamishka will not be at the premiere, he will disrupt the screening of the film. But so that Gable would not have any problems, Hattie McDaniel asked him not to do this and just quietly attend the premiere. Did you know that actress Barbara O'Neill, who played Scarlett's mother, was only three years older than Vivian Lee? Also, Clark Gable had a unique approach to acting. He refused to cry on camera, believing that men should not show emotion. In fact, he even threatened to quit the movie if the director and producers insisted on tears on screen. Eventually, the director convinced Gable to shoot two identical scenes, one with tears and one without. The director compared the versions and convinced the actor that the teary scene looked better. Additionally, the director told Gable that the tears in this scene embellished him and made him more interesting to the audience. It's worth noting that Gone with the Wind was the world's first fully colored film. Color filming in the late 1930s was a remarkable achievement, but it required a significant financial investment. However, film companies did not produce color films for many years after its release. It wasn't until the 1950s and 1960s that the era of color film began. Despite the limited time he had to write music for the movie, composer Max Steiner worked tirelessly, putting in 20 hours every day. Throughout the production, the composer had to endure discomfort. It's unfortunate to note that Vivian Lee was paid $25,000 for her work, while Clark Gable received $120,000 despite spending less time on set than Lee. Furthermore, Hattie McDaniel, who portrayed Mammy, faced criticism from some members of the black community for participating in a film that perpetuated racist stereotypes. She responded that she would prefer to portray a maid for $700 per week rather than actually working as one for $7 per week. The movie did not feature a real steam locomotive, only a model. Originally, the plan was to use a real general steam locomotive, which Wilbert Kurtz arranged for filming. Unfortunately, the management demanded payment for travel expenses, round trip, at a rate of $3 per 100 pounds of weight. Using the real steam locomotive for transportation would have been too expensive for the studio, given that it weighed approximately 50,000 pounds, not including the cars. Therefore, wooden models were used instead. Additionally, the filming required an emaciated horse, which was eventually found. However, by the time it arrived on set, it had gained weight and its protruding ribs were no longer visible. The makeup artist had to draw dark stripes on the horse to represent protruding ribs. 
During the filming of the movie, Olivia de Havilland, who played Melanie, visited maternity hospitals to learn how young mothers behave after childbirth and cope with stress. Director George Cukor even pinched Olivia de Havilland's toes during Melanie's labor scene to help her feel the pain. It's worth noting that Olivia de Havilland lived the longest of the four main characters. The actress passed away in 2020 at the remarkable age of 104. In comparison, Clark Gable and Vivian Lee passed away at the ages of 59 and 53, respectively. It's amazing to think that she lived such a long and fulfilling life. Additionally, Leslie Howard, who was only 50 years old, was a reserve officer and fought in World War II. Tragically, his plane was shot down on June 1, 1943. Actors Vivian Lee and Clark Gable disliked each other in life. Vivian Lee said that she could not stand to kiss Gable during filming, as he had a strong smell of breath. At the same time, according to crew members, Clark Gable ate garlic before filming kissing scenes. Moreover, Gable and did not consider Vivian Lee as an actress. For him, she was just a pretty face, nothing more. After the birth of his daughter, Rhett pours Mammy a drink to celebrate the event. Clark Gable poured actual alcohol into the glass instead of tea, and Heidi McDaniel, who was unaware of this, drank the alcoholic beverage. Her surprise was unparalleled. The movie featured almost 60 actors and approximately 2,500 extras, including 400 volunteers who generously worked for free. Moreover, mannequins were utilized in the scene with the wounded. Gone with the Wind won eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Cinematography, Best Art Direction, and Best Editing. It's amazing to think that the film had a budget of $3.85 million, but grossed a record-breaking $400 and $2.3 million at the box office. When adjusted for inflation, the amount of fees earned by Gone with the Wind is approximately $4.2 billion, making it the highest grossing movie of all time. When adjusted for inflation, the amount of fees earned by Gone with the Wind is approximately $4.2 billion, making it the highest grossing movie of all time. Even Avatar, which currently holds the title for highest-grossing movie in the world, has only earned $3.82 billion when adjusted for inflation. Did you know that producer David Selznick paid a $5,000 fine for including foul language in the movie Gone with the Wind? However, Selznick himself stated that he did not regret the fine, as he believed it was worth it. Also, director Victor Fleming assumed that the movie would fail at the box office and, as a result, chose to take a flat fee instead of the originally proposed percentage of box office receipts. This was his significant mistake. Shooting the movie Gone with the Wind turned into a production nightmare. The actors frequently quarreled, the crew was in constant flux, there was a shortage of funds, and the script underwent numerous revisions. Ultimately, David Selznick's health began to suffer. He developed a stomach ulcer, and his hair began to turn gray. The premiere of the movie Gone with the Wind was a huge event for Atlanta. Around one million people from all over the United States attended the premiere, which even prompted the governor of Georgia to declare it a public holiday. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in my future videos. I would love to see your thoughts on the movie in the comments section.